Bentley's Hack Pack released in early February 2013 for the PlayStation 3 and the Vita, and January 2014 on smartphone devices, is a minigame pack developed by Sly series newcomer Sanzaru Games. This game is released to coincide with the launch of Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, and shares aesthetics and gameplay modes with that title. Thieves in Time, like the original Sly series, featured hacking minigames starring Bentley, and this hack pack release takes the three gameplay styles from Thieves in Time, and builds new levels and challenges based on those molds. We'll be talking about the PS3 version of Bentley's Hack Pack today. Each game style features about 20 stages, each requiring about a few minutes to get through. Overall, you're looking at a few hours to beat every stage, but each of those 20 stages also has five tokens to collect based on meeting specific criteria in each level. These tokens are used to unlock additional stages in a kind of 3D model viewer on a prize wall featuring some flavor text. Aesthetically, everything takes strong cues from Thieves in Time, if not outright reuses the graphical assets, so it's quite an appealing game to look at. The music falls on an electric spectrum that, while not bad, isn't particularly memorable either, however I have to appreciate some callbacks the music makes. Either way, it's tough to fault the presentation, since the game was made in secret due to Thieves in Time's release date getting pushed back by Sony. The game costs just a few dollars and for the most part is pretty fun across the board, so it's already pretty easy to recommend, but let's talk about each of the three individual game modes. The first is System Cracker, which is essentially a continuation of the game mode found in Sly 2 and 3. You control a little ship with the left stick and aim a weapon on it with the right stick, and occasionally use a bumper button to draw a line in certain forms to encircle and destroy objects. These levels tend to feel the most meaty and refined, and should be pretty comfortable for any fan of the series. And while I tended to prefer the next game mode I'm going to mention, System Cracker's levels tended to feel the most well-designed. The second game style is Alter Ego, and first off, just look at Bentley. Perfection. Alter Ego is an auto-scrolling twin-stick shooter focusing heavily on collecting power-ups to upgrade Bentley's level. 10 is the max, and by the time you reach it, Bentley becomes a shmup monster. These levels come down to adjusting to a visual barrage on your senses to dodge fire and always be on the lookout for enemies to beat and masks to collect. These levels are a nice adrenaline rush and were the most fun I had with Bentley's hack pack. I'd go so far as to say they're worth the price of admission alone. I do wish the levels had introduced a new gameplay mechanic or two as you go along. The main thing that changes are just the actual stage layouts, but it's no big issue. Whether you like this last game or not pretty much comes down to how you feel about the PS3's 6-axis motion controls. If toting a ball around circuit mazes and trying to avoid holes in pinball-esque bumpers sounds appealing to you, you'll probably like Spark Runner. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those people. It feels really nice when things are going smoothly, but I'd just rather have a reliable analog stick option than using a tilt mechanic and questioning whether my mistakes were really my fault. I mean, let's be honest, they probably usually are, right? but the sense of doubt sometimes isn't very fulfilling. I got about halfway done with this mode, and while I thought the layouts were fine, I just wasn't crazy about it overall. I figured disliking this type of motion control isn't exactly a revolutionary stance, so if you're watching this and have played it, what did you think? It's a bit tough to talk about Bentley's hack pack in any kind of depth, since it is nearly entirely bite-sized, simple minigames wrapped up with a neat bow, but I still wanted to cover it separately as part of the series and maybe get the game on your mind since I don't ever really see it mentioned on the internet. I think it's pretty neat to have more of these minigames to play and I kind of wish they'd released more of these stages as time passed. But it seems the series in general is at a standstill these days, so until a Sly 5 hopefully gets announced, I'm happy with what we have here. Even if you haven't played a Sly game before, if the low price and easy accessibility made you curious, I think you should definitely give it a shot. So with all that said, um, I'd like to apologize with the lack of videos lately. I've had a pretty big leak issue in my bedroom, as well as other life obligations lately, in addition to a sore throat I'm just recovering from, and all of that's been taking a lot of my time lately. I'm going to try and speed things back up some, but I just wanted to get that out there for all you who may have been wondering. I should be able to get my Thieves in Time review out relatively soon, and I have some other ideas I want to act on in the coming months. So to close this out, I've been McKenna's fan, this has been Learning to Love PlayStation, and thank you very much for watching. This video was generously supported by the following Patreon producers. Thank you.